My name is Matt Fritsch, and I'm the Senior Vice Chair of the Board for the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, also Vice President of Global Security, Health and Safety for the N MBS Group. So we felt that mixing up the content would allow for a broader audience of members of the Chamber to benefit of learning uh, more about the economic opportunities that lie in Hollywood through rebuilding and reimagining. You know, Hollywood being not only this geographical area that we're sitting in right now, uh, but it's also a global industry that may provide different opportunities for our members. Uh, that said, I'd like to take us into our final segment of the summit, uh, the International Consul General Panel. I'm proud to moderate this panel and will now introduce you to our, our panelists. Uh, Marcela Celorio, Consul General of Mexico in Los Angeles. Hi. <laughs> Melini Jankowski, Deputy Representative, Netherlands Business Support Office, LA. Marcella Smith, Consul General of Ireland. Uh, Zabe Sheikh, Consul General of Canada here in Los Angeles. And Chalette Semel, uh, Director of Cultural Affairs, Consulate of Israel in Los Angeles. Yes, to get things started, um, Explain your interest in Hollywood. So why Hollywood? What can ho the Hollywood business community do for you and what can you do for the Hollywood business community? Who do you want? We can start off at the end. Oh, me? Hi. <laughs> um, okay, so, you know, I think there is a big similarity between um, Hollywood and where I'm from, which is the Holy Land, in the sense that those are two places that are physical places, but they're also um, ideas. They're also, um, um, yeah, so a, lo a lot of people have this idea of the Holy Land as much as a lot of people have this idea of Hollywood. And this, it's, a, it's a place that is a dream. And, um, and there's a bit of a gap, I believe, between uh, the actual place and the idea. And this is a gap that we are trying to bridge in our everyday lives in Israel and definitely in um, I, I would say um, promoting Israel to the world um, and I think this is something that Hollywood is dealing with as well um, so there is a the difference between uh, I think you're constantly chasing this idea of a place and a, and a difference between becoming the place and becoming the, the doers that make it what it is that make it the dream for others so um, in our, in my, in my area, which is the cultural area, which is arts and commerce, obviously Hollywood <laughs> is the place um, to be. And I think, in uh, specifically, if we talk about uh, the business of uh, television, um, we are at a very specific place. And I mean, we just heard from Ted Sarandos, um, who represents this uh, moment in time uh, that we're uh, that we're at um, with the change in the relationship between Hollywood and the, the world, uh, Hollywood and the rest of the world. It used to be that Hollywood would create content that is primarily American for American audiences, and then later on, it would broadcast it to the world as a secondary market. And what we're seeing in recent years, um, in the recent few years, uh, because of the streamers and because of the pandemic, which accelerated this uh, process, is a, ch a shift in the uh, relationships between in the relationship between Hollywood and the world, in the fact that international content is suddenly being viewed by the world, um, so it's being made by the world and it's being viewed by the world as a primary market, and that's a very big change. Um, and I think I mean we you discussed uh, uh, Squid Games before, which is the biggest example. I mean we are watching foreign content, we are watching international content in international languages. We are exposed to new worlds and new ideas. And uh, a lot of our, uh, our uh, nations have uh, benefited from, uh, from this change. And it created, uh, Hollywood became a place for business for the world. And as we are all in this, um, this um, physical, physical, finally, <laughs> this physical gathering, I think it is about the importance of a physical entity, a place that is physical for all these 
ideas, motions, and everything. So uh, Hollywood is that place. Hollywood is that place of business. And um, my colleague from uh, uh, the consulate in uh, New York is here today. I'm so delighted that he's here uh, with me. Uh, Daniel Zeus, who is the head of film and television in North America from the consulate uh, in New York. And together, um, we are not diplomats. We are, uh, we are, um, we are from the um, industry, I would say. So we are people from film and television. And it's an interesting thing that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Israel does, where they hire professionals to have this professional discourse with the industry. And uh, what we have done, since we uh, both uh, took our positions in the ministry, is we have brought the ministry into the industry. We decided that it is our duty to be uh, instrumental in, uh, in creating these relationships between the Israeli creators um, and producers and the American and the global industry um, in order to foster relationships and to foster business. And uh, we are extremely delighted today because um, we are here working on our first summit, which is called Scripted Israel, which is going to take place here in Hollywood um, between the 19th and the 22nd of September. So it's really soon. And it is going to be the first uh, official summit promoting uh, Israeli content on the global stage. Um, we have various partnerships with uh, all the major studios, uh, streamers, production companies, agencies, and managers. We're going to bring over a delegation of around 40 of Israel's top uh, producers and uh, writers for scripted television and create um, opportunities for them to meet the American industry. Uh, it was going to be one-on-one -on -one meetings, and there's going to be a lot of networking opportunities for them and educational opportunities for them in order to even the playing field and, uh, and foster new business and new relationships. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. <laughs> right. Thank you, Chalet. Uh, Malini. Um, yeah, so the Netherlands is a very small country compared to the LA region. So uh, we try to show the companies that are interested in this region that there are so many opportunities here and why they should come to LA, Hollywood, the Southern California region. Um, and we focus on different sectors here. For example, healthcare, creative industry, circular urban development, sport, just to name a few of those. And uh, for example, in two weeks, we have a very big trade mission coming up for healthcare and urban mobility. Um, there are over 100 companies joining us for this trade mission. Um, we'll be joined by several ministers and other government officials. And here in LA, we'll be visiting different organizations, uh, universities, hospitals, anything of relevance for those companies. And of course, after this trade mission, we're hoping that uh, a number of these companies are going to invest in Hollywood and that some are going to be part of the ecosystem here. Um, and another example that I wanted to share of direct investment here in Hollywood is a collaboration between a project developer and a Dutch architecture firm. They're working on the first LEED project. So LEED being leadership in energy and environmental design. And uh, this architecture firm is specialized in sourcing their materials locally. Um, and they're working on that project together. So that's very interesting and exciting for this company. And um, a great example of direct investment here, I'd say. Thank you very much. Zeb? Um, well, Canada has the uh, good fortune, one might say, or uh, Hollywood has the good fortune, one might say, depending on which side of the border you're uh, <laughs> living on, uh, of this amazing relationship. Uh, no two countries in the world have the kind of relationship that Canada and the U.S. have, and not only in business, but when you think in the world that we live in, in a geopolitically uh, fractious world um, where tensions get high pretty fast depending on what people say, how people think, how people identify or who people identify as, Canada and the U.S. actually have the only binational command in the world where we protect together our land, air, and seas. This is very important. To add to that, we have this great relationship between the three countries that represent North America. So the USMCA, the new NAFTA as people call it, and I know dear Marcella will talk about it more, but that agreement 
alongside this, this idealism of being able to protect a region together, it's very unique in the world. You think of Europe and you think of all the countries that are together that have history, hundreds and thousands of years of histories, and yet they don't have that agreement, that familiarity, that in spite of two very different cultures, because it is very different if you live on or work and play in both sides of the border, it's very different, and yet it is almost symbiotic as a partnership, friendship and allyship. That's the basis of the relationship. And then when you take, put on storytelling content, when you think of Hollywood, as you spoke about, as an idea or an idealism, that's kind of the perfect realization of an idealism, this idea of storytellers coming together, whatever gender they happen to be, whatever identity they happen to be, whatever the history of their arc of lives and ancestry, because of course we speak of our First Nations uh, people as well, our indigenous peoples and our Métis and Inuit people. This is very important to us. LGBTQ2 plus identities, finally, black, indigenous, people of color, those creators, those content makers, we talked about the pandemic uh, revolutionizing how people ingest stories, of course, but who tells those stories has also been revolutionized in the last couple of years. And Canada has been at the forefront of being a welcoming country for international storytellers who may not be able to tell their stories in their places where they were born, but who can tell their stories in Canada. And then this relationship between Canada and Hollywood, that Hollywood, the idea of beaming stories around the world, well, when you're part of Canada and a Canadian and you can tell good stories and you have an authentic story to tell, to be a partner and a friend and an ally to a region that beams stories around the world, this is an amazing relationship for both storyteller and the audience that consumes that story. Because you learn from each other, you teach each other, but more importantly, you have the opportunity for making the world a closer place in these times where the world clearly is feeling its separation like in perhaps not the first time in its history, of course. We're only experiencing it for ourselves and the first time in our history. The world's done this before. People before us have done this before and people after us will do this. But while we are here, what does it matter? How do we unite? What do we say to each other? That's the relationship that Canada and Hollywood have, whether it's storytelling or the other businesses because of things like USMCA or because of that binational command, because security and national defense is also a great partner from Southern California all the way back up to Canada. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, when you think about contextually, and we'll get into more kind of specifics, but I just wanted to kind of give that, 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 that idea of dreams, uh, idealism, who we are, what we mean to each other, that plays an important role, and Hollywood is so important to that globally, but so are Can Canadians, if not the country of Canada, the people of Canada are. Hope that makes sense. It yeah. made a lot of sense, thank you very much. And definitely our international relationships are more important now than ever before. Uh, Marcella. Well, I would like to share some data with you. Uh, we have 50 consulates, Mexican consulates here in the United States. And in just in California, we have 10. Uh, the Mexican consulate here in Los Angeles uh, serves and uh, provides citizen services to almost uh, 3 point uh, and a half, almost 4 million Mexicans uh, that were born in Mexico and from Mexican origin. And we oversee another four consulates. So all in all, we have 10 million people from Mexican origin. So you can see that that's market. And uh, I, we're here at the chamber, you know, uh, the chamber invited us. So I think that we have to think uh, in a more pragmatic way. And uh, I'm going to take what you said, that you mentioned the storytelling. It's so important, the storytelling. Imagine a migrant that is coming from Mexico, the American dream. But then you, put, uh, you uh, add the Hollywood dream. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of young talent, young people, creative people, that they want to come to Hollywood to have a success. And so there are writers, uh, producers, actors. And how do they do it? So when I, um, you know, as consul, I try to inform and provide information to the Mexican community how to navigate the system here in the States. So I think that we have here in Hollywood, in Los Angeles, to teach them how to navigate the Hollywood uh, ambience. 
how, how, how can you succeed in Hollywood? Because there's a lot of storytelling and we always tell them, you have to tell your story, you have to be heard, you have to find your own vo voice. Yes, but they have to live and they have to eat, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so how are, that's why I'm asking the chamber, mm -hmm. how can we help these people to navigate the system in Hollywood so if they have a wonderful idea, because as uh, you mentioned, uh, the creativity is there and there's a lot of creativity, but uh, how come are you gonna be paid for, for it? And just to wrap up, and uh, I'm, I'm very uh, grateful that I serve my country in Israel and living in the Middle East and now living here in the Western Hemisphere, I must tell you that we are so spoiled. <laughs> we have everything. So we're doing just a small amount of what we ha should have been doing. Mm -hmm. So um, I know Israel, a tiny but powerful country, and all you have been doing is amazing. I really do you know my admiration to them. And uh, I think that we have to seize this opportunity. That will be it. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you very much. Uh, Marcella. Thank you, uh, Marcella uh, and, and I <laughs> thought we would confuse you by having the same name. Um, but it's also an indication of how much we actually have in common yes, yes. <laughs> overall. Um, I also want to pick up on, the, on that theme of, of storytelling. I, and I think it uh, comes as no surprise to anybody for me to say that Ireland obviously is a, is a nation of, of storytellers. In fact, there is a wonderful story that Hollywood actually owes its name to an Irishman, Matthew Gurk, who uh, came over here uh, shortly after the Great Hunger or the Famine, as you may, may know it, uh, in the late 1800s from a place called Hollywood in County Wicklow and mm. brought that name with them. Our Hollywood is over a thousand years older than yours, so you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first gift to you. Um, so, but it, it is a, an excellent demonstration of how many stories we have to share and, and to tell and the links uh, that our stories um, bring uh, and how they can, can actually bring us together. And that is the, the remit of uh, the consulate here. It's actually to look at how we can collaborate with you in sharing those stories and how we can mutually benefit from, from that. Whether it's you know, having Irish musicians sell out your, your venues or working with promoters, um, whether it's Irish film selling out cinemas, you know, we've got some incredible Irish film coming out uh, very shortly, the uh, Banshees of Inish Erin, Colin Farrell's latest film. Um, I'm really, really excited about our Oscar-nominated film this year, and Colleen Kuhn, uh, which is The Quiet Girl. I don't know if Larry mm. Lebeau is in the, in the audience, but on Colleen Kuhn is, is our Irish language. Um, <laughs> he was joking that he hadn't been aware that we had our own language as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot about, about Ireland that we, that we need to share and uh, uh, with with all of you, um, and I really want us to be able to understand how important um, the relationships are within within all of this. You know, we have all been talking about special relationships. We're all special to you in in, in our, <laughs> our own ways, um, but. It, that's really, I think, indicative of you know, the openness of Hollywood, um, the diversity of Hollywood, and how we are, can benefit from that, but how you also can benefit from collaborating and working and partnering with all of us uh, uh, as well. So uh, thank you for this opportunity to be here with you today and to, to really deepen those partnerships. Thank you very much, and I think that's a great segue. Um, so the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce is made up from uh, small businesses, uh, from dry cleaners, restaurants, um, already some of the biggest companies on earth, uh, Amazon, Netflix. So how can the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce maybe help fulfill um, your desires and obligations uh, for joining us? Let me start yes. with that one. Um, I, I think, well, firstly, that events such as this are such a fantastic way of, of starting some of the, these conversations. Um, and, and I think Marcella also raised another really important point uh, in relation to yet yeah, looking at how we actually help uh, particular artists and, 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 and in a way that that's also mutually uh, beneficial. 
um, you know, relationships with particular studios, relationships with, with local businesses. Um, I think it's important that the Hollywood Air, uh, Chamber of Commerce is able to tell local businesses that we are here as a partner, as uh, someone who wants to work with them, as someone who wants to, to collaborate with them and ensure that, that uh, we're not seen as just here to, to poach <laughs> uh, or to take, to take business away. I, I was listening uh, very much to the, the, the last panel, the one on real estate oppor uh, opportunities in Hollywood, and it was so fascinating because the words that kept coming up throughout that discussion were collaboration, partnership, um, and you know, I think as, as we've all experienced throughout the pandemic, you know, we are so deeply interconnected, we are so interdependent, and that is true on the, on the global scale. You know, Ireland it has an absolutely phenomenal economic story to tell. Uh, 2021 was, was one of the most incredible economic years for, for Ireland um, uh, across a whole range of, of uh, factor, um, areas, you know, in terms of our employment, in terms of service exports, in terms of our Irish film, TV and animation. They were record-breaking years across all of those sectors. But what we really recognise is that the, our success is dependent on our global partnerships. Um, and that when Ireland is doing well, then our partners are also doing well. Um, and so, as I said, I want to kind of dispel the notion that consulates are here or to poach or to be directly in competition, that it is really about collaboration and about partnerships. And the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, I think, is, is already doing a really good job in terms of facilitating that. All right, thank you very much. Well, uh, when I arrived in Los Angeles, I thought that I will find this uh, wonderful uh, high-end uh, Mexican cuisine. And to my surprise, there's a, you know, two or three. You can find taquerias, tacos, uh, <laughs> trucks, you know, food trucks. But it's incredible. There's an, a sector of opportunity. Did you know that the number one tourists that come to Los Angeles are Mexicans? And there's 1.8 million Mexicans that come. So besides the 10 million that we have here to, to serve, we have all these tourists from Mexico coming to the States, but to Los Angeles. So I think that there is some, uh, an opportunity there in Hollywood to uh, promote, to facilitate this uh, Mexican cuisine that is recognized as the World Heritage um, uh, Patrimony. Uh, so I think that the, there's an opportunity to promote this kind of uh, restaurants because up to today, I think the Mexican residence is the best place to eat Mexican food, you know? <laughs> I invite you all. <laughs> it's really good, trust me. <laughs> um, so, you know, we, I spoke about the relationship, obviously, that we have on a contextual scale, but how does that really manifest itself on the ground? And thankfully, Canada has a very unique kind of system when it looks at its own consulate system. You were talking about that, Marcella. We all, of course, have, have trade arms uh, as part of our consulates. The U.S. does in the countries that it's in. But our relationship with our local chambers is incredibly important. Uh, because Canada, at the end of the day, in terms of population, is the size of California. It's a 10% of that. Yet, as most of us all talk about, there are so many Canadians in terms of the percentage here, living, working, playing, or visiting. And that accounts for billions of dollars worth of not just possibility, but reality in product exchange, service, service exchange, and in this kind of global supply chain world where global supply chains are not as resilient as we need them to be and want them to be, uh, we can be great partners in ensuring, ensuring those gaps in terms of that global supply chain, whether you're talking stories or whether you're talking products and services mm -hmm. that you all are a part of. Um, that's important to us because at the consulate, our uh, trade team is here, uh, they're all represented here, and they work uh, cross-sectorally, not just in media and entertainment, but in uh, retail, in fintech, ICT, innovation, uh, aerospace, uh, 
legacy and traditional markets as well as new innovative and now markets as we call them, right? So we run the gamut of what's possible to do with us, whatever business it is, because we have what are called market acceler acceleration programs. We call them high intensity services at the, at the <laughs> consulate. Uh, we have about 16 or 17 in each sector. And what that does is allow for this relationship between Canadian SMEs and the American counterparts to exchange information, exchange ideas, exchange innovation, but exchange economy as well, GDP. That's important in exchange investment. So we help those Canadians come here and we'd love to be more attached to what you are doing and who you are mm -hmm. so that we can also represent what's beyond that idea of Hollywood, that it's just about storytelling or it's just about going to some great, amazing event about storytelling or media and entertainment. There's so much more, there's so much more depth. And yet that is a foundational principle. So how do you use a foundational principle and get the rest of the reality a part of it? One of the issues though, I'll be honest, that you can also help us with is things like when large policies such as Buy America come into play, which inevitably are of course about the sovereignty and protection of the local or the regional or the kind of, you know, looking inward to make sure that in this post hopefully pandemic world, although we might be in an endemic, and in this very fractious geopolitical world where supply chains are not as resilient as we want them to be, despite this idea of globalism, that we're actually talking together to ensure that policies like Buy America don't hinder that supply chain integration that's already exists between countries like Canada and the US. Because we don't just sell things together, we actually make things together. Mm -hmm. And if you really analyze through the USMCA, you'll see that that supply chain crosses three borders at almost an hourly clip whether you're making a hamburger, frankly, or whether you're making a vehicle, or whether you're making a great security and defense radar system and or software system. This is very important, and we're by America things, and I don't mean to harp on that, but I think it's important because that's a very kind of wide sweeping policy that's all about protecting the economy of the country, but some of the times the partners who are part of the protecting the country as well get lost in the shuffle. And so the chamber members can really speak up on that behalf of that relationship. That would be really great. And we can work with you so that you can identify some of the things that are important to you back in Canada or vice versa. So that's something I think that we could really work on together. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. And our last, one of the breakout sessions was about procurement and it's very important to have you know, relationships right now all over the world, just try and get the things that our businesses need to kind of keep going. Uh, Malini. Yeah. Um, I'll build a little bit more on what is, has already been said. Um, collaboration and partnership, I think there's a lot more to gain and a lot more possible there than what we're doing right now. Um, for the Dutch companies that are represented here, for example, how can they connect or um, yeah, connect with ch uh, members of the chamber? Or if we have a very uh, a question, a niche question from a film producer or a costume designer, how can we help them navigate here? Um, but also, for example, if we host another trade mission, um, we always need catering. <laughs> or um, <laughs> the Dutch people, the Dutch people love to bike. Maybe there's a bike shop or mm -hmm. people that um, organize those sorts of events here in LA. That would be very helpful, and that's something yeah. that we're always looking for. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been said, but I just want to add to that. Relationships are the most valuable thing we can have. And because of the, the structure of the diplomatic world is such that a lot of people, we, we come for a specific time and then we leave. And mm -hmm. there is no body of knowledge that, uh, that um, um, is, is remained because of this uh, tr constant uh, transition. We come here, we create all these relationships, and then we leave. And places like, I mean, bodies like the Hollywood Chamber of, of Commerce are instrumental because you get to meet all these people all at once and create all these relationships uh, all, all at once. And partnerships are the most important uh, 
thanks to us. I mean, we are sitting here today because of our fantastic partnership with New Filmmakers Los Angeles, which is a fantastic organization that I think has brought to everybody's attention the idea that uh, consulate generals are uh, mm -hmm. uh, have a role in uh, in uh, the um, film and TV industry specifically uh, and in Hollywood. And, um, and, and, and sitting here is also Maria Lopez from Variety, who we have a media partnership for our uh, Scripted Israel uh, uh, today. So, and, and we have a fantastic ad in the back cover, the inside back cover of, of the Variety issue that uh, is uh, being handed to you today. So we feel uh, this is really like our bat mitzvah <laughs> today. <laughs> and, uh, and, and David Jerome for creating this, this forum. It's just, I can't begin to describe how valuable it is. And even during our uh, conversation, our first uh, conversation, there was something so specific um, about hotels. We are bringing this delegation and we, were, uh, uh, we need a hotel <laughs> to, to, to um, accommodate them. And uh, as, as foreign entities, we are uh, tax exempt. Uh, but a lot of the businesses don't know it and are unfamiliar with this and don't know how to handle it And it just made our lives so much harder in trying to produce this thing and at the end of the day Especially here. It's who you know It's about who you know and for me to be able to pick up the phone and say David. Can you help me out? This is uh, Unparalleled yeah. and that's such a Hollywood thing to say it's about who you know, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's, I'm, I'm picking it up <laughs> Well, I, I really want to thank you all for being here today um, it's also interesting to know that uh, Larry LeBeau with New Filmmakers is kind of an ambassador, a member of the chamber and a good supporter of the chamber, um, but um, helps to get the word out about Hollywood. And so we I, deserve a star? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you all do. <laughs> right. Again, thank you very much. Thank you.